Grant Gallo. And I'm Jenny Ryan, and uh, we're both part of uh, People's Open Network, uh, which is based in Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just want to say thanks to uh, our networks for putting on this awesome event, and uh, thanks to the TO Mesh people who are kind of coordinating it too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so our talk is called Our Stable Networks. Um, so the idea coming in was just the basic idea of, let me see if I can make sure I can advance the next slide, um, of, asking, yeah, of asking the question like what is a community network and what makes a community network stable? Um, so I guess the first question I wanted to ask people is uh, how many people think they know what a community network is? If you get a raise of hands. <laughs> Okay, and uh, how many of you work on community networks actively? Okay, it's a good, good. Uh, About thing. half. <laughs> nice. Well, half of the people paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So that's, that's good to know, get an idea of who is out there. Um, so I guess. How many of you work on s s what you would call stable community networks? <laughs> Three. <hands. laughs> nice. Okay. So some experience in the room. Um, so I guess we'll go start with a history lesson here, as how this kind of all started and the idea of community networks kind of came about. So it really started with the free net movement in the late 80s uh, and, uh, mid and throughout the 90s. And one of the first ones was actually in Cleveland, Ohio, which is my hometown. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I also found out that Toronto has, or still has, a free net <laughs> that is still active, unlike the one in Cleveland, as far as I know. So does Ottawa. So Canada. Go Canada. <laughs> Go Canada. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, but still, they're, in the U.S. at least, uh, they're not uh, as active anymore. And this was a message that actually greeted free net users uh, in 1999. Uh, and so they were more similar to BBSs and kind of, sorry, is, that, is this not working? A little way? Is this good? Oh, I'm, I'm not in the rain, the zone of it. Wonderful. Um, so they're a little bit like virtual networks. They weren't necessarily so much as service providers. You kind of were a subscriber to a, to a service. Um, and yeah, I'd say it's in some ways similar to uh, CJDNS, Hyperborea, kind of things that kind of things that like TO Mesh are working on actually, where it's uh, a decentralized service. Well, in this case, it was centralized, but uh, was community owned or run owned by uh, the people who ran or who used, used it. it. <laughs> used it. So, um, but then uh, in 1999, they kind of started to disappear. The internet kind of uh, started to change. Um, and as someone said, a year is an eternity in networking. <laughs> and so, if you want to talk about this list, <laughs> Jenny, could you um, so uh, for for anyone interested in doing like uh, deeper research on the history of community networks and uh, sort of the current status um, and various challenges and organizational structures, et cetera. There's a um, great body of research at, uh, I think the website is netcommons.eu, um, which is a European uh, and EU-backed uh, research project. Uh, many folks from Nenix and Gifi uh, conducting research. And so some of the sources we're citing when talking about uh, the current like state of our networks uh, come from uh, one of uh, I, I believe Leonardo from Nenix uh, presented it at least at uh, Battle Mesh. <laughs> Leonardo's from Nenix. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. okay. um, and uh, I think Roger also, maybe, who wrote that paper. So He's from Giphy. Um, and this is a giant list of all community networks could, known. There's definitely so, a European and so, European bias to all these. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. yeah. We should we should kind of have a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, there's definitely we're. Uh, taking a focus in this talk about North American uh, community networks and looking at a lot of successful European networks and seeing how we can apply their ideas. Um, and also taking a look at Latin American networks. Um, but we mentioned that we're from People's Open. Uh, 
also known as pseudo mesh to some people. Uh, could could you help me find pseudo mesh in that list? Mm. <laughs> there's well, a little bit. There's a little bit better. You might be able to find it now. Uh, wait. Uh, I could have found it there. Uh, oh. There it is. Yeah, there there it is. You found it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we're from, from Oakland. Um, and so this is a bit of a breakdown of at least timeline. This is a huge list, so I'm not going to go through them all. But there was kind of a first wave. So the Wi-Fi standard, I, IEEE 802.11, was uh, created in 1997. And shortly after that, uh, consumer, uh, consumer wireless became a lot better, a lot higher quality, and a lot uh, more uh, affordable. So these small networks it's and still expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> more, yeah, 2000. still expensive. <laughs> so, so these started popping up in a lot of uh, cities. Uh, Seattle was one of the earliest, and then it kind of, the idea made its way um, from Seattle and Portland to uh, Europe, where it really, really took off with, I, with networks like Freyfunk and Ninux and Funkfoyer. So, um, and then there was a second wave, though. So that happened mostly because of this new technology. And this one, if you want to... <laughs> uh, there was a second wave um, after... So any idea what happened in 2008? There's a, the recession started, and a lot of people got interested in a, in a different way of organizing. Um, so the uh, Arab Spring happened. Occupy kind of was inspired by that. A lot of people got interested in this idea of more democratic ways of governing uh, just infrastructure projects, just communities in general. Um, and uh, most of these. Uh, I, I would, um, <laughs> I'm just noting that we didn't put uh, Kansas City. Uh, Freedom Network on there, um, which uh, was initiated by a uh, uh, friend, Isaac, who set up a Freedom Tower at Occupy Wall Street, um, so broadcasting Wi-Fi out of that, and uh, that was sort of like training wheels, and then uh, went on to uh, start a network in Kansas City that served over 500 families, mostly in like uh, low-income uh, housing apartment complexes, uh, and I think they just had maybe seven point-to-point -point links at that point, uh, and uh, you know, distributed the signal with home routers, mm -hmm. omni omnidirectional routers. Yeah, so you can see uh, pseudo meshers on there. Some some more of the names you might be familiar with from North America are on that list, and they all started around that time, around 2011, 2014, 15. Um, and it kind of has also grown into this, in a way, a third wave. It's maybe just a continuation of the second wave and a lot of the ideas. And I, like, some people in the room are working on projects on this list. Uh, and they're definitely projects that are uh, exploring different ideas and trying to like, ha like hack on the things that people who've been doing it for decades or a couple years and just take those ideas and improve them and reinvent them. So it's cool to see people taking things that people have worked so hard on, like other people have worked so hard on, and really, really uh, expanding on them. So. And um, there, there's two uh, non-Northern, uh, North American uh, projects on here, which have interesting models also. Um, Open Freenet uh, is a project uh, based in a rural community in India after coming to Battle Mesh, I think in 2013, um, went on to uh, set up basically local intranets that could host educational content because for a lot of youth in rural parts of India, getting to school can be difficult or impossible uh, based on distance. So um, they used mesh networking to basically store educational content, videos, et cetera, um, that could be played in like local uh, community spaces, village spaces, and uh, Kulab in Brazil is sort of um, a Brazil-wide, uh, there's multiple endeavors in rural parts of Brazil as well as uh, connecting some of the poor favelas uh, that have no access um, to internet. And these are kind of newer initiatives, I think 2016 or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we're kind of going to go in and analyze this a little bit more. Uh, through reading uh, Leonardo's paper with NetCommons, kind of got this idea that European, it's very focused on European networks, 
and they're kind of uh, split into two ideals. Uh, one of this federated uh, network where there's one uh, governing body over all of it and ones that are more peer produced, kind of ad hoc local networks that are run by a single community and maybe use some of the same ideas from neighboring communities, but in a way are uh, completely detached from them for all intents and purposes. So federated CNs, as I was kind of talking about there, they have a cooperative governing body that acts as a legal uh, representative for the network at large and is uh, like a foundation dedicated to the maintenance and development and use of this network. Um, it's, a, it's similar to how we have, you know, you, we're here at Mozilla and they have Mozilla, Mozilla Foundation that sponsors a lot of the development done on Mozilla products. Or Internet Society, which has you know local chapters all around the world. Yeah, S similar ideas. So they have, they have member collectives or companies that provide services on the network, and they they maintain the network and they develop it. And it's a combination of volunteers and uh, professionals, people who are doing this as a job. They're who are maybe work for a local telecom operator who's in a way. I want to say reselling. Or are a local telecom <laughs> operator in their own right, or yeah. an installer, or yeah. what have you. And they're container. just kind of part of the, the network, part of the commons. So it's, it's all based in this shared value system, this shared belief in the commons, that you, through a stewardship of that, we can all have a more equitable uh, use of the network. Um, and examples of this are Wi-Fi and uh, FFDN, French Data Network. Um, so we'll go into a little bit more on Guifi because that's definitely one of the more stable networks. So I don't know if you want to speak um, to Guifi a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, well, they say Guifi, uh, actually, um, and uh, started in the early 2000s uh, to kind of just answer a, as a response to the lack of uh, access and uh, the expense um, across uh, Catalonia. Uh, especially in more rural parts of Catalonia. Uh, and this is the largest community network uh, in existence with over like 32,000 active nodes. Uh, they have some great resources on their website as well. You can go to gifi.us to get the English version. Um, and uh, they have an interesting model of a kind of combination of sort of standard point to point uh, links and um, some mesh topology yeah, and, some and uh, fiber deployments also. Mm -hmm, and, and, and fiber backhaul and uh, and lots of um, small maybe solo one person uh, companies that uh, can maintain the network in various places across Catalonia so it also makes jobs uh, <laughs> and uh, the essential like I guess, core operating agreement. I'm not sure if they call it the network commons license. Mm -hmm. We, uh, a yeah. bunch of different networks converged in, I think yeah. it was late, like mid 2014 or spring of 2014 I think to develop the, a network commons license. The free, open, neutral network compact, I think. Something like that, something along that lines. And, and that's <laughs> something that um, a lot of experienced community network uh, operators or organizers will emphasize is having an underlying set of values and agreement, um, essentially shared policies and, and a, a known intention from the get-go mm -hmm. uh, in order to like expand, grow, and cooperate yeah. with various demographics. Yeah. And so it's mostly in Catalonia and also in Valencia and the Iberian Peninsula. And I think they also have some remote networks that are in Africa. I, they have like some outlying networks that are like part of Wi-Fi, but it's, so it's not strictly like You're Catalonia. You're thinking of commotion, are you? Yeah. Are you thinking of commotion? No, I, oh. <laughs> they have yeah. some like, they mostly, in, but it's like you could actually be part of Wi-Fi like anywhere in the world in, a, in an interesting way. Um, so moving on from that, we also mentioned that there's peer-produced community networks, uh, and these are a little different from the federated ones in that they're still made up of a lot of small pieces, but they're just a loose association. They're not under a single banner. Uh, they don't have that legal representation. If they get into legal issues, then they have to, in a way, represent themselves. The 
name at large that they go by is mostly there for moral support and more of like uh, sharing technologies, sharing information a little bit. It's much more informal. Um, and it's uh, definitely fully flat. That's one of the main differences. There's, it doesn't even appear uh, verti like vertical. It's completely a horizontal organizing. Uh, and they kind of they value this idea of uh, f uh, peer production and a free network rather than the idea that the network's necessarily a commons. I think they have a more an assumption that that's the case that people everyone kind of believes that, but they don't have a strict like you have to sign this agreement to be part of our network. It's if you don't want to sign the agreement, start your own network kind of attitude. I, I think Fryfoon communities uh, they developed the, oh, peak, the Pico, the Pico, Pico peering peering, agreement. That's right. um, so it's another. Uh, compact to look at, but I, all the Fryfunk communities, and they they all have their own websites. Whereas Nenix, for example, that it's a lot of disparate uh, networks um, with the highest concentration in in Rome, but uh, it's all on one website. So there's that mm. sense of uh, a shared identity. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it's examples that are Fryfunk, which we mentioned, and Funkfoyer, which is in Austria, and Nenix, and Russian obviously Italy. leaving Italy. Italy. Is that what I say? Anyways. I oh. Uh, <laughs> and we were obviously leaving some out, and it's mostly because uh, most networks, community networks even in Europe, don't necessarily fall into these two categories strictly. Even these ones don't. These are just kind of general ideas, but uh, so there's like there's other ones in Slovenia and uh, Greece that don't necessarily uh, strictly fall into one of these ideas. So to talk about Freifunk a little bit, um, they started in 2002, so around the same time as Wi-Fi. Uh, they develop uh, Batman Advance, which is a routing uh, protocol, layer three routing protocol, layer or layer two, two. excuse yeah. me. <laughs> and they also develop a version of OpenWord, a, a fork of OpenWord, I think called Gluion, um, which is a firmware for their routers. And every, interestingly, every community has its own version of that firmware, it's its own build. So if you're part of a certain community, you have to have different firmware. Uh, and, and I'm sure they're very similar in some ways, but. There are some efforts to make like a one firmware to like rule capture them all. all. Yeah, to rule them all. <laughs> um, that would be um, the, the Liebermesh project, which is a collaboration. We'll talk, we'll talk, we can, yeah. That's true, we get into that later. We'll get into it a little mm -hmm. bit. And there's, so there's a few, there's different communities in, yeah, German cities. <laughs> they have over, I, th I think, over 400 yeah. different networks across. Over 400, Germany. and they're varying sizes. Mm -hmm. um, so, what about North American community networks? Um, well, they're kind of, a completely different uh, idea, different, just a different beast. They really don't. I wanted to try. We tried to categorize them. Me and Jenny like went back and forth a lot about like, are they Wisps? Are they like wireless ISPs? Are they social good projects? Are they community organized projects? And they're all some combination of that, which is what makes it uh, very interesting, but also difficult to navigate. So we're gonna go over a few North American community networks um, right now. <laughs> so. Uh, NYC Mesh, which people I'm sure know about. Uh, Do we have any reps in the room? NYC yeah. Mesh, cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, it, kinda, it started around 2014. It currently has 185 active nodes, uh, and it's a sponsored project of the Internet Society, and it um, they operate two super nodes, one in Manhattan, one in Brooklyn, and they based on a structure of if you can see that node and then, uh, point at it, you can either set up your own or you can uh, donate to have them help you set it up. And you can also donate, um, make, they, they recommend like a monthly do donation of $20 a month to, uh, in a way, use the service. It's, it's, an interesting it's an interesting model that they have uh, spun up. Um, and, but it's one where it's, it, it's very, uh, it seems like, um, like they're very much like a, an ISP in some ways, but they're still a community network. They're still volunteer run and still, they still fall into a lot of the ideals of community networks. And I think they, they um, I know they used the, uh, some iteration of the Network Commons license that came out of that collaboration. Yeah. Um, and so, similarly is PitMesh. So, do you have any PitMesh people in the room? Hey! I, d I don't want to do you, uh, like, m mis uh, misrepresent you, but, uh, I don't, so. <laughs> Um, correct us if we're wrong. Yeah, correct us if we're wrong. <laughs> um, so it, it was started around 2013. 
uh, this is 67 action. So I, the, most of this information is coming directly from people who work on the projects also, just so you know, anything that doesn't necessarily have a reference. Um, a lot of websites, community network websites are outdated. That is <laughs> and a valid, maps. that is a fact. <laughs> Um, and it's a volunteer project that uh, operates under the ausp auspices of MetaMesh, which is a larger idea uh, and doesn't necessarily just limit itself to PitMesh. So it, or in, in the w same idea, similar ideas I imagine to Wi-Fi or Freyfunk, like similar kind of aspirations. Um, and it's all based on volunteers um, who, donate, who donate their time in a way that they're uh, compensated by gaining experience of working with a novel technology, which is an interesting way of uh, at least stating it or structuring it. Um, they also, which was very interesting, is that they have some do some for-profit work uh, setting up event uh, Wi-Fi and smaller temporary networks, I, uh, I think, I imagine. And it subsidizes some of their non-profit work. Okay. <laughs> really fast. Yeah, let's keep, well, we're almost there. So I can I guess I can very briefly summarize the next two slides, um, both in uh, uh, Detroit, the Digital Stewards Project in Detroit, and in uh, New York, the Red Hook Wi-Fi Project, um, both uh, using uh, the Commotion firmware, which is developed by the Open Technology Institute, which is sponsored by the New America Foundation, and uh, funded by the State Department, incidentally. Yeah, Not anymore, I don't think. Well, yeah, stimulus um, funding probably ran out. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's let's keep moving. So actually, we, we also want stuff. to talk a little bit about Latin American networks. So they uh, have a they're very different, and uh, there's just not as much out there about them. There's going to be a, a paper, I believe, a white paper written about them sometime soon. Uh, and some examples are StreetNet in Cuba and Network Bogota and Altermundi. So to talk about StreetNet. This is a completely different idea of what it is. It's used exclusively for gaming. Uh, it's a, if you don't use it for gaming or for approved purposes, it is, it's illegal. Uh, it's, and it's informally kind of uh, allowed by the Cuban government to exist. They have a zero porn, zero politics, zero links to the outside internet. There's no Facebook or Google or anything. They actually have their own versions of those, their own kind of like clones. Uh, and there's also something there called uh, El Paqueta, which is a uh, thumb drive that gets passed around sneaker with net. sneaker net. Mm -hmm. uh, they share a USB drive with terabyte, you know, a terabyte of articles uh, to for people to read from the web at large. You want to talk about? It? Oh, um, Altamundi in Argentina uh, connects um, largely like rural, disconnected communities um, using long-range point-to-point links and are some of the core developers behind LibreMesh, which is a firmware project in collaboration with uh, Linux and Giphy, some other folks, and uh, um, Libre Router, which uh, just debuted like, I don't know, a month ago maybe. Um, so a uh, entirely open hardware router. Um, and uh, yeah, the last chat I remember, we were chatting with Nico and he was going out to make a 120 kilometer link that day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Some pretty impressive so, links in Altamundi. Yeah. So they, they, we actually talked directly with Nico of, uh, about, about this idea of community networks and what makes them stable. So he gave us a really interesting definition of it. So this is mostly from uh, Nico of, uh, Nico Pace of Pache, Pache mm -hmm. of uh, Altamundi. But the idea that a community network is an infrastructure owned, created, managed, maintained, used, and expanded by a community. And that's one idea of what it is, but there's also a... Kind of the ideal. The mm -hmm. ideal, but the thing that ends up a lot of times being is it's an infrastructure that serves the community, and it's not necessarily managed or owned or created or maintained or, or even used by that community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ends up, and some of these projects end up being that way, where it's uh, just people are interested in this idea, and they work on the technology, and maybe the community never is there. So it's, it's a... Like, it's unfortunate it falls into that, but the ideal is that it's that idea. And then this idea is from uh, Leonardo. And uh, more getting to the notion of uh, internet as a you know, commons resource, as a resource commons um, that uh, is a collective good and socially produced and uh, governed by the people that use it. So, steward and maintained and governed by the people that use it. 
So the question that both of these bring up is those are what community networks are, but what's a stable community network? Um, so we kind of try to define that with the help of some resources and uh, friends. Um, and this is kind of what we came up with is that expanding on the previous idea from Leonardo was that there are collective goods that are shared freely or at cost. So there's no profit margin made. They're not nonprofit essentially, right? By nature, they're socially produced and continuously replenished. So they're never uh, deplen deplenished. They're always being reproduced and they're governed democratically uh, in a decentralized way and uh, as community pool resources and they're utilized sustainably. So that's kind of a general like throwing it out there idea. And um, another idea is like, how do you practically apply that? And this is from Nico Pache from Altermunde. Uh, and the practical approach is that you have, that you have community involvement, sustainability, training, use, and robustness in that order. Uh, so I really like the stress. It really was big on stressing the idea of community involvement and making sure that people are behind you. You can't create a network without the community being there. You can't, community network isn't a community network without an actual community. <laughs> right? and, and education and training, training the trainers essentially so that you know, they can go out and start clusters in their own neighborhoods or you know, uh, their own hometown. Yeah. And if you want a more practical approach, and I was inspired by Gabe's talk actually, is that the number one thing is to have fun. I mean, <laughs> it's like if it's if it's not being it's not fun for you anymore, then it's not then why like why are you still working on it? Don't uh, burn out. Don't burn out exactly take a to, break. Avo to avoid <laughs> burnout. Take a break. Have fun. Have have a barbecue. Go get beers. You know, <laughs> you need you need to not have meetings all the time. <laughs> yeah, meetings are boring. You just go out on the node mounts or. <laughs> so, um, and and this was the kind of one of the last ideas he gave us was, we're like we're too few to be like classify ourselves, and that's when we ran into this problem with North American networks. Is like trying to put them into groups. It, we're not like there yet. We're not. Uh, we don't have the stable networks to classify them in different categories. So we shouldn't be divisive. We should make sure that everyone wants to collaborate and be work together on building these this idea. So. The next slide, the global. Yeah, <laughs> and then to that end, like the the um, global community of community networks uh, is pretty amazing in terms of just collaborating on various projects. Like, oh, I didn't do quite a good job with my. Uh, it's here. Or Libre you, mesh. yeah, Libermesh, Libre Router, um, Open Word, and the lead sort of merging now. Um, BMX, which is sort of an experimental derivative of Batman Advance, uh, another routing protocol. BMX Seven uh, is the current stable version. QMP, the Quick Mesh project, and uh, yeah, Battle Mesh, uh, uh, Wireless Community Weekend in, at Freifunk, and. Uh, uh, I, tr I tried to fit our networks in there, but I, I couldn't yeah. get it to work with H the HTML. Some of the <laughs> annual events that so. kind of converge uh, the community and are really fun and awesome, unfortunately, all in Europe, but uh, that's now changing. It's changing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are awesome. We, so, we, yeah. we have uh, con some folks at the last Battle Mesh co conspiring on uh, Battle Mesh West, or as we preferred to call it, Snuggle Mesh. Get rid of the battle <laughs> component. This is like between Californians and South Americans, so just kind of it's the vibe. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, concludes our talk. These are some of the re links, references. Uh, we'll probably post the slides somewhere uh, soon. And uh, yeah, you can post them on our server, which will be on the testbed mesh, people's open mesh that we Hopefully set up this, this afternoon. afternoon uh, so in yeah, networks. we don't have time for questions. I don't think. Um, so if you're interested in discussing this more, we'll be here uh, this evening, 4 p.m. our uh, workshop talk. So we're going to do some brainstorming about these ideas that we presented. So we'd love to see everyone come back and be part of that, uh, that session. We'll so. have some hands-on work workshop stations, learning stations for like, you know, cable crimping and mounting and firmware flashing and that sort of thing. And probably a swag making table because I could brought my button maker. Yeah. And <laughs> and uh, I think uh, an Althea table Definitely as well, and a mapping maybe. table maybe, on like mapping line of sight. Uh, yeah, bring you, bring you the whole workshop experience yeah. from o straight from <laughs> Oakland. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.